I know what you're thinking. How do they make those authentic ropes? <laughs> they use this setup, with this geared strand twister at one end and a single crank handle on the traveller at the other. It's called a rope walk, and you start a rope by walking up and down with yarns hooking them onto the devices. Here we have six yarns to each of the three hooks at one end, so you have to walk up and down nine times. The standard length for a British naval rope was 1,000 feet, and to make these, in 1790 they built the longest brick building in the Western world at Chatham Dockyard, 1,135 feet long. So there's a thing. The yarn here is in a big coil under this sackcloth. That odd wooden thing is just to hold the lines neatly apart when there's no one hanging on to them. It's a twisted string, and what fibre have you used? This is jute. 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 We want to, this fibre is going about mm -hmm. 45 degrees. And okay. I think you are going to make that by 60 laps here. Because okay. you turn 60 on this one. Yep. Will mean, which means that these hooks go four times 60. Right, so we have this crank handle which cranks this very large gear here, which then turns these much smaller ones with only ooh, six. Is it six teeth on. And which way do I crank? Clockwise? That way? Anti clockwise. Anti. Okay, you reckon about six times. The earliest rope walks like this I know about date to the later medieval period, but it could be older technology. This picture supposedly shows ancient Egyptian rope making, a simple hand twisting bar here. You can just see the suggestion of twists in the rope, and that could be a weight to keep the tension constant. This picture is supposedly of an Egyptian rope factory, but I'm not so sure. These may be people walking around with lines of yarn coming off what might be spools, winding it around pulleys, but this to me looks like a loom for weaving cloth, and these spools could just be for spinning thread. This could be a rope, though, with its component strands perhaps coming through some frame with lots of holes in it to keep them neatly separate. A simple hand-twist method is shown as still in use here in about 1425. So you're watching the rope until it gets at the angle that you want, yep. which is 45 degrees. Let's speed things up a bit. It's okay. I think it's okay, right? Okay. It's about 45 degrees. 45 degrees, okay. Yep. So now we've twisted the parts from this end into three strands, should we call them? Three people together to make a rope. Okay. So, we have to borrow someone here in the audience. So oh, we'll I see. Us. Okay. So, if you go down there. Right. So here we have weights and a trolley with two wheels so it can move. And a single crank handle with one hook and all three parts, three strands we've just twisted up, are attached to it. Stefan is now inserting a device known as a top or topper. You'll soon see what this is for. I want to twist around this one. Yeah, yeah, just keep on going. Soft keep on going, dry. keep on going. Nice and easy. <laughs> this one will go forward a little bit. And uh, you just follow it. Come on. My next job was to slide the top back at just the right pace to keep the strands forming into a rope at 45 degrees. Okay. You take this. Is that close enough to 45 just degrees for you? The handle cranking the one hook is on wheels so that as the twisting causes the rope to shorten, the hook moves with the shortening. The finished rope will be about seven tenths the length of the starting yarn. A little, little faster. A little, little faster, little. okay. You like to have this 45 degrees, you know? Mm -hmm. Whoops. You can see that the strands, as the top passes them, are being twisted again by this process. We have. My, I would like you to go a straight line. At the other end, meanwhile, a third operator watches the lad as he cranks and cranks the geared hooks once for every fourth turn of the single hook. This compensates for the extra twist and keeps the strands twisted by the ideal amount. If you don't do that, mm -hmm. you start 
making a very good rope in the other end. Right. And more like a boiled um, spaghetti, you, you more we, we come here, right? OK. Here are a couple of strand twisters I photographed in the Maritime Museum on Orland, dating from the age of tall ships. This method has been motorised, but is essentially the same for modern ropes. Here's a hand-cranked machine that was made in 1928. OK, thanks. Right, so now to push it off. Like this, mm -hmm. like that, and back again, and then twist this end round and round. And you do it very tight, mm -hmm. and then putting the end in. Okay, so inside a bit of, there. Bit of lashing here at the end. I am the best rope making on this market. Oh ho! Yes, I am the only one. <laughs> Just as well, you're the best, then it would be so of embarrassing course. otherwise. So, hold them. Yes. Okay. Like, like that. Oh, We have a very good rope. We have a very good rope. Thank you, sir. My goodness, my hair is spectacularly awful today. <laughs> oh, still, it's a trademark.